I'm 47. I started marketing when I was 15, really actively for my father's business. That means I've been marketing for over 30 years. 30 years ago, how many people here are under 35 years old? Raise your hands. First of all, let's clap it up for all these young fuckers. So kids that are under 35, let me tell you a story. When I was a young man marketing for my dad's liquor store and wine store, if you wanted to get people to know about you, you had to pay. You had to pay. I had to pay a newspaper to put an advertising in the newspaper. I had to pay a cable company to run my TV commercial. I had to pay for a billboard to show my sign. I had to pay the marketing uh, direct mail company to make a flyer and send it into your mailbox so you would see it. I had to pay. Today, the attention of the world lives in here. The things that dominate here is gaming and entertainment and social networks. People here complain that they're not getting a lot of views on their videos on Instagram or TikTok or these platforms, but they have forgotten that it's free. Let me say this nice and slow. Today, if you were to advertise on social networks, the cost of showing up, not making it, but showing up is free. This is crazy. Google, which I used a lot, Google AdWords. How many people here do Google AdWords pretty aggressively for their business? A little higher, I just wanna get a sense. A lot of you. Google charges you money when somebody clicks. Not everybody converts. You try to figure out if the amount you pay do enough people convert that it's worth your money. But it still costs you money. The social network revolution is insane. It is free to build brand. Most people in this room, most people in Brazil, most people in South America, most people in the world do not produce enough content for how big the opportunity is for free attention. That is the biggest elephant in this room today. It is a wow. It's a wow because it's fucking free. And yet people will complain and say, oh, Instagram shadow banned me. Nobody shadow banned me, you. You just suck at social media. Even when I was six years old and wanted to sell lemonade, when I was a child in New Jersey, the thing that I spent most of my time on was not making the lemonade, though it had to be good enough to drink, not standing behind the desk or the table that I had for my lemonade, I spent most of my time walking up and down the streets of New Jersey and trying to watch cars drive by and try to figure out which tree or what street sign to put my lemonade stand sign on that gave me a better chance to sell lemonade. I didn't understand what I was doing at six years old. When I was 11 years old, I sold trading cards and tr collectible stickers at shows. I spent so much time thinking about how I would build out my table and where I would put what cards and what stickers and I would walk the whole show and pay attention to how people set up their tables. What I was doing at that age and then when I turned 14 and 15 and started working for my dad's liquor store, I would watch customers walk through the front door of the liquor store and I would pay attention to how they would walk, where they would go, what displays they looked at, what shelves they looked at, and what I was doing my whole life, and what I do for a living now, and what every single person at this conference, whether you work for a big brand, or you're an entrepreneur, whether you've been doing it for five years, or today is the first day you're going on this journey, what I was doing then, and what everyone needs to be doing now, is following the attention. Too many people here get comfortable with one or two platforms to make content or one or two ways of how they sell product and they become in love with it and they become complacent and they stop evolving to where the attention is. 
my career as a content creator started on YouTube in 2006, but it was Twitter in 2007, and it was Instagram in 2011, and it was all these other platforms along the way, Snap and TikTok and LinkedIn and YouTube Shorts and Facebook and even ones that didn't last forever. How many people here by show of hands remember Vine, the app? Remember that? That didn't last forever, but in the two years that it was dominating, or the year and a half, a lot of attention was grown from that platform. More importantly, a lot of people learned by doing Vine how to make short videos, which is now one of the most important ways to communicate in our society. The biggest thing that I'm trying to leave this conference with is getting everyone here dramatically more accountable to focus on attention, not where you want to make content, but where your customer is. You may not like TikTok or YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, but if your customer's attention is there, you not liking it is only achieving one thing, you losing out on more customers. This is an incredibly important framework and it's a very big issue in today's world because most people are not producing enough content to enough places. A lot of people here are incredibly focused on selling. So they like Google AdWords, because it converts better. Lower funnel, conversion-based marketing, right? The reality is, that's great. Selling's important, that's how a business grooms. But when you are building brand, when people care about you or your business, that is the ultimate form of selling. There is no affiliate, there's no portal, there's no no Google ads that are more powerful than building a brand. Apple does not sell, Nike does not sell most of their product through Google AdWords or affiliate marketing. They sell most of their products because they've built brand. The number one goal from every single person here and every business here is to build brand. When you build brand, You don't have to sell, it comes to you. How do you build brand is what I'm passionate about. And where do you build brand is what I'm passionate about. And that's why I start this talk and I'm focused on attention and accountability. Most people in this room have not been accountable to executing against your big words. I've been flying the last day and yesterday this conference went on and today when I land and I searched Twitter, X, and all the other platforms, and I see a lot of people here commenting about what they're doing at this conference and what they're up to. And of course, I have to hit the translation because it's in Portuguese and I wanna know what you said. And when I read it, a lot of people here are talking big game. A lot of you are talking about building huge companies and you're gonna be massive and you're gonna build big stuff. And then when I click on that account and try to find what they're doing on the internet, they're producing very little content. We must be accountable that if we're talking big game, that our actions have to match our mouth. Attention can be very overpriced and it can be very underpriced and there is no general rule. How many people here do for their company have done marketing with influencers or creators? You've paid an influencer or creator to bring awareness to your business. Raise your hands. Raise them. Hi, please. Okay for the hundred or so that have raised their hands, influencers. In general, remarkably possible for it to be underpriced. You can pay an influencer a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, and get enormous return on your investment. On the flip side, how many people here have paid influencers and it was a shit show, did not do anything? Raise your hands. How many people here have done things with influencers and it was a very good thing and was good for your business? Raise your hands. Almost everyone who raised their hand for the first thing raised their hand for the second thing. This is why I want to talk about attention per behavior in the world we live in today. Many of you may ask, is influencer marketing good? The answer is maybe. It can be good, it can be bad. That is actually the same for everything. If you think about it, hey football, is that good for your business? For Messi, it was very good. 
for Ronaldo, it was very good. They made billions of dollars. The ROI of a football for those human beings was a lot. For me, I played two weekends ago and I hurt my hamstring. That was negative ROI.